Binder Nagel, planning manager here with City of Walnut Creek. Um, we have a number of a mix of staff and others in the room and developers, and appreciate you being here. Um, today's program is essentially going to look at technology and the future uh, here at Walnut Creek, what we're doing to address some trends that we see and how we're trying to become uh, perhaps more of a 21st century model in terms of development services and things we provide. Um, but also we want to reflect on uh, this past year. It has been over a year, I think this is our 12th or 13th meeting uh, of the Development Services Forum. We've covered a lot of ground and Jessica is going to go in greater detail on all of that. But I wanted to, uh, as part of our agenda, I wanted to uh, preview some of the changes that are going to be coming to the development community to this from as um, adopted by the City of Walnut Creek, by the City Council. Uh, some changes coming in 2018. Um, a couple of them are related to fees and process, but I wanted to just to make you aware of them. Um, as of January 1st, uh, the city's traffic impact fee, for example, will be increasing 30 percent. Uh, that was approved by council. That's moving forward, and that's to reflect the 30-year cost estimates for projects that are in the traffic impact fee project list. So these are all improvements meant to improve the circulation and flow of traffic in, around, and through Walnut Creek. So there will be a 30 percent increase on the TIF fee. Uh, similarly, an increase in affordable housing. Um, or at least the, the uh, fees for uh, housing. So today, if you were to come in with a residential project and propose, uh, say, 100 units, there are requirements that either you provide units on site at a various income levels, at various percentages of your project, or conversely, you may pay a fee. And it is that fee that is increasing by 20% uh, from $15 per gross foot to $18 per gross foot. Uh, council also eliminated a couple of the exemptions or um, provisions that, that they felt had lasted their time or needed to be changed. One of them would be the exemption for single family homes. The inclusionary fee will now apply. Uh, the zoning ordinance will now apply to single family homes. And further, they also um, allow for, because state legislates, the state bill allows for the um, uh, collection of a fee for rental units or the inclusion of income restricted rental units within a project. Previously, the Palmer case, among others, had eliminated that option and had, had stricken it and we had to change our ordinance. Well, the state legislature has gone back and made amendments to the law such that they address the concerns in Palmer and now cities are able to require inclusionary units within rental projects as well. So for those of you in the rental or pardon me, rental or residential business, you may want to uh, check further with that. And if you have more questions about any of these topics, Feel free to come up afterwards, or I can put you in touch with either uh, Rafat Ray or Andy Smith on, uh, on staff, or you can talk to Har uh, Margot Ernst regarding housing interests and matters. Um, one other quick change I just wanted to highlight, you may or may not be aware, the, we modified our public art ordinance about a year ago, and there were some dates, at least there's one date coming up in July of 2018, and that's related to the business park. Uh, currently, the public art fee either the installation of public art or the payment of a fee. It's similar to the inclusionary housing ordinance in that sense. But the public art ordinance does not apply in the business park until we achieve 90% occupancy or July 1st, 2018, whichever comes first. I think we are likely, though we're making progress in the park, I think we're likely to hit the July 1st date prior to achieving a 90% occupancy rate in the business park. So that's another change that's coming along in 2018. Uh, it's, a little, it's a little farther out, but point is, that's another change next year. I'm going to stop there. There are other, I'm sure, questions that might be out there, but I'd like to move along to the heart of the matter. I just want to give a preview to those of you in the room, some of the changes in the new year. And that said, I'd like to invite Jessica up to, uh, I guess we did that. Now we're going to look at our spotlight on technology. Good morning. It's been really great getting to know you all over the last year. Uh, I don't know about you, but this is uh, going to be something that I'll miss heading into Christmas. So thank you for coming to our, what is now the 12th forum. Um, and so today we're going to actually take a second to look in the future and then also in the past. And one of the things we're thinking a lot about is technology. And in, in particular, how can we move forward in economic development um, from a, at our counter um, from an inspections and digital plan check perspective. So we've basically brought people here from a couple of different areas of the city to talk to you about what we're doing and also what we're thinking about. The goal of this is not just for us to 
talk at you and show and tell. I know there are places where you've probably lapped us a couple times around uh, on the technology front, or you have ideas for what direction we should head. So when you're sitting here, if you see something that's interesting, stop us, let's chat about it, and we'll take that as a, a next uh, kernel moving forward. The other thing that I'll just mention is after today, I'll be sending out a survey to everybody who's on our list. So we have more than 55 people who have attended the forum over the course of these last 12 months. Uh, so I'll be sending out a survey to all of those people, asking you for your opinions about what should happen next. All right, so the future of technology. Uh, from the economic development standpoint, I want to share with you two things that we are working on. One is offsites. Has anyone in the room used offsites before? Do you want to share a little bit about how you've used it? spot. <laughs> um, it's a great opportunity to, 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 for cities to actually go and, and say, hey, we, we're going through this specific plan and we have an opportunity and we would like to see this area, for example, redevelop from industrial use to housing. or uh, And so it kind of puts the city in the driver's seat in terms of putting developers on notice that there are these opportunity sites that we would like to see developers show interest in. So that's exactly right. And for us, uh, Offsites is a website that's free for both sides of the equation. There's a premium version, but um, we keep it lean. And in our case, it allows us to basically highlight specific sites or areas of town that might have some interesting opportunities available to them. We are just getting started. We've put a couple of individual sites for things that we've thought about, but one thing that we're moving towards is starting to get some of our specific plans and the elements of our specific plans up and running. And obviously, you have access to those. You could download the PDFs and follow along that way, but we're trying to make it a little bit more accessible to you and easier for you to peruse. And a lot of other cities in the area, and in fact, across the country, are also on offsites. So actually, this gives you a sense of who is on upsites in the, in the local area. Then there's something called Open Counter. So how many of you were here, I know Hamid, you were, when we did the journey mapping exercise um, back in, I believe, February? Anyone? OK. So one of the things that we heard when we did journey maps with people at your offices or here was that it was really challenging for people to estimate what kinds of permits and what kinds of fees were going to apply when you were considering a particular project. And that was true not just for the very, very large developments, but also someone who's just looking at uh, doing a, a retail spot, just one downtown. So we've been thinking pretty hard about that and exploring a couple of potential solutions. And something that we're pretty seriously thinking about implementing is a tool called Open Counter. Have any of you encountered Open Counter in other cities? All right, so I will get the, the pleasure of doing a brief demo uh, in the form of a video. When residents set out to open a business, renovate a home, or host a special event, they're faced with complex requirements from the city. They need permits and licenses to get started, and their projects must conform to the building code, zoning code, and transportation and impact requirements. These regulations can be difficult for non-experts to understand, especially when city departments are spread out in different buildings, have different hours, or use different terminology and procedures. This complexity can cause applicants to miss important steps, which can lead to compliance issues down the road. That's why we built Open Counter. Open Counter is a modern permitting and licensing platform that streamlines citizens' interactions with local government. The software prompts applicants to enter their project details and shows them where their land use is allowed, which permits they will need, how much the permits will cost, and who will need to be on their team. When applicants are ready to move forward, they can submit and pay online and print their permits once they've been issued. This cuts down on trips to City Hall and reduces the workload of city staff. Open Counter has partnered with over 50 cities and towns across the country to streamline permitting and licensing and promote local economic development. To learn more about bringing Open Counter to your community, please contact us at hello at opencounter.com. All right, so um, to give you a little bit more information about what this actually means, basically they work with a city um, to take all of our zoning code and ordinances and turn it from 
what I would call government speak into human speak so that you can actually say, okay, I'm looking to do a residential development um, of about this size that'll ask you kind of the key triggering questions uh, that somebody who's really experienced at working per at the counter might know to ask, but otherwise you may not know. Uh, and then they will actually do a live update and tally on the side of the page for your estimates for what your fees and permits would need to be. Now, this is not guaranteed to be 100% accurate. We're not going to necessarily uh, in any way be able to replace what it's like to just talk to a human, but as a starting point for you to figure out what might come into um, the question, what might come into your concern while you're thinking about this, and for you to also be able to explore the zoning uh, without needing to call a planner specifically, it's something that we're thinking about investing in. And the reason, actually, I was happy that we've talked. I was talking to Kim this morning that we have some other agencies is that we can actually incorporate some other outside agencies as well, should they want to be able to contribute some of their questions or their fees onto the same platform. Um, so I will actually just show you the city of Fremont as an example, what it looks like. And then I'd love to, to pause for a second and get your feedback about whether or not this is something that uh, would be interesting to you. So this is live city of Fremont. <clears throat> they have two options for you. One is you can just do a simple zoning check. Um, and so let's say we wanna open a bar, um, then we can actually search. Oh, okay, this is our drink drinking place. And then it'll actually show you where things are permitted, conditionally permitted, not allowed. Um, you can also do that in reverse order and look at a particular address and see the list of what is permitted and allowed that way. And then you can also, it'll give you the questions that will help you determining, in determining any other pieces of information about where it might be allowed or not. So that's an example of the zoning check side of things. Um, <clears throat> and then if we go back, if you're looking to actually open a new business uh, and start to think about what kinds of information you might need, uh, let's say now we're talking about a restaurant, then you can do a similar situation here where you actually choose what you're thinking about opening. We'll just, for the sake of, uh, this choose something where it is permitted no we won't have sidewalk dining no we won't have housing no we won't have a drive-in no we won't have more than 50 seats how very convenient it's allowed um, and then you basically get to go through a series of questions that will say okay we are doing new construction and you can see even just by adding that it automatically will start to tally for you some other pieces of information as you go and see, so, um, and then from here, this will actually live calculate once you fill in the rest of this information to give you an estimate. So I'll pause there. What are people's thoughts? Do you have questions? Does this help with some of the things that we've heard uh, about what is challenging in trying to plan and estimate a project? Yeah, Sandy. So does the, you go on to the, <coughs> excuse me, you, you go on to the city's website and there's a link to this uh, application. Mm -hmm. And so it, it resides here, or does it reside in um, Open Counter? So we can have it on our city's website. <laughs> so you could go to um, our Walnut Creek's website, and then it would link off to, yeah, to the, the um, it's run by Open Counter, but it's still owned by the city. We just, it's basically a SaaS uh, software as a service um, option for us, yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is where, where does the, where would because that's a uh, program that we have available right now mm -hmm. where do people find that on our website opsites.com okay so, so that one is actually <coughs> you just create a, an account through opsites and that will have all of the different cities ours is just one of them yes oh sorry Can, does this look at impact fees as well or? I think it could if that's okay. yeah some of those are a little bit more complicated to calculate, so mm -hmm. but that would be great if it could. And the nice part here is basically what they figured out was one thing computers are really good at is just math. So when we're actually talking about codes and cutoffs, um, it's the kind of thing that it's complicated for them to get up there, but once they do, those kinds of things can be figured out through a series of questions, yeah. 
does it directly interface with your uh, permitting software with Acela? So that would be the idea. So in the video, it said you pay right through there. Actually, in this case, because we use Acela, it would kick you over to Acela to then finish the application process and, and work through that. So it's not 100% end-to-end. Um, it's more meant as this is the front door, and then we'll move you on through our system. But it, it, if I can clarify, it does, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is it does take the information you've already input and transfer yes. it into, so you don't have to repeat those steps, so there's a transfer process. Yes, that is true. At, like, th is there is there an intermediary step where like a staff person is looking at is the square footage that this person entered actually right? Yeah. You know, or is he using the right net or gross or whatever for the calculation? And I think that, that's a great question. We are not moving to a system here, and Courtney's actually going to talk more about what our online permitting will look like later. But um, we are not moving to a system in which this is going to be 100%. No human is involved in any of this stuff. It's more again meant as uh, if you're trying to get this initial sense so that when you do walk in the front door and make that call, you have a much more educated perspective and we can also look. Yeah. And I'm just going to add one that I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> For the recording. Um, when the, tr the information is transferred over to Acela, um, it's going to come over as, an it's as a pre-application and then the person who, the staff member who is... Um, reviewing it or on duty when they take the application in we'll do the the review right there i see this as helpful even prior to an application being submitted where we're underwriting the site on an acquisition side and some of the times the most difficult part is just figuring out what it's zoned for and what uses you could potentially put on a certain site. So if you can streamline that process and save us time, and then in addition be able to get an estimate so that of impact fees or whatever fees may apply can just help us on the underwriting side to kind of speed up that process. So even prior to an application, it'd be incredibly helpful. You hold on one second. We're recording this, so we <laughs> want to make sure we catch everyone's comments. Does it track the inquiries so staff can go back and see what people are looking at, what the inquiries are? Yes, and actually that's part of why we included this on the economic development section of talking about technology. Because yes, it doesn't it doesn't do it, I would like to say it doesn't do it in like a creepy way. We're not trying to look at what each individual person is looking at, but we do get a master dashboard saying what are the types of things that people are searching for. And one example they gave that was helpful was they said, this can help you make sure that your zoning code is actually updated regularly. Because if you start seeing that everybody's searching for you know, a pokey shop or that everybody is searching for um, a particular kind of senior living facility, for example, whatever the case may be in your city, maybe you need to actually update and uh, relook at how you're classifying that use based on the trends. Any other questions? Okay, great. Well, thank you for that feedback and it, it, we'll continue to update you as we think about this. And that actually transitions us perfectly to Courtney Wood, who if you haven't interacted with her yet, um, this will be a real treat. It's <laughs> This works for you. You want handheld or? Uh, I'll do handheld. Okay, hi. I'm Courtney. Um, you'll see me at the front counter. I'm a senior permit technician. Been here about 13 years or so. Um, I got the pleasure, thank you, Mr. Kong, for um, implementing Acela last year. And with that, um, there's different modules within it. And one of the modules that I'm going to talk about today is the um, online services that are available now and what we're looking forward in the future. Um, we do have a portal online that uh, you can go online and do a, uh, a couple different things. Um, you can look at the permit status um, if you're attached to a record, if you're a developer, contractor, architect. Um, you can also call for, or you can also schedule inspections. Um, you can, if you're a resident and want to see what your neighbor is doing, you can go ahead and do an anonymous research. Um, you can also check your permit fees, and um, which leads me on to the tutorials. <laughs> um, how to do the tutorials, um, if you go onto our city's website under the Permit Center, there is this little thing right here. It says Citizen Online Services. Down at the bottom, there's tutorial to teach you how to do a couple different things. I have provided handouts for you if you want the paper form. Um, and our communication manager. 
Um, this is a module within uh, Acela that helps us communicate with you guys. Um, it will automatically trigger on a status of a permit. Either you receive a permit, um, receive an application, approve an application, a permit's issued, it's final, you schedule an inspection and it's resulted, you know right away because we have your email. Um, and there's a lot more that we're gonna incorporate in that with planning and engineering. Summer 2018. Um, online permitting is um, a big deal to everybody right now. Everybody asks, do you have this online? No, unfortunately we don't right now, but we will soon. Um, you'll be able to pay for your permits, apply for permits, <coughs> Apply for minor review permits, um, where you apply for the permit online. It gets sent to city staff. City staff will do some review. Email you back saying, hey, it's ready for pickup. You pay for it online. And it's printed out, and you're good to go. Um, there's two types of applications that you can do online. Issue immediately. You'll be able to apply for it, pay for it, and get an inspection card immediately. The other kind is a minor review. You'll be able to apply for the permit, receive notification when it's ready for, when it's been approved pay your permit fees, and then print out your inspection card. Um, these are a couple types of the permits that um, we are talking about. Um, there are more. Um, there's some estimates that I know that Jessica's working with Open Counter, but we're also looking at estimates within Acela online so that you kind of have two different perspectives. Um, I'm not sure if Open Counter uses um, square footage based. We'll be working with you guys for whatever we want to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're going to try to do two triggers on that. So either valuation based or square footage based. Um, and we are open for suggestions on other types of permits that you can pull online. Um, I have researched around a couple cities that do use Acela online. Um, and these are some of the permits that are pulled. Um, but we're open to other suggestions. Early 2019. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm just curious what you've been seeing in terms of usage for, are people actually scheduling inspections online? Are people um, watching their status online? Are people using the, the online services? Um, I get a lot of phone calls every day of, um, we're having issues uh, scheduling the inspections because within the portal, it only allows you to schedule one inspection at a time. Um, so we've actually, uh, and that's an Acela thing that we can't fix right now. Um, so we've actually opened it up to uh, having the inspectors, uh, the developers or contractors email us, um, and you can schedule up to five days in advance. Um, that does happen probably 50% of the time is they're using the online, but we still do get a majority of the phone calls. Um, research, whenever we get a phone call at the front counter and they want research, we always point them to this because it saves them time and it saves our staff time. Um, checking statuses all the time. I'm getting constant phone calls. Hey, I can't find my, my permit record. Can you attach me to my record? And I do it and we don't get phone calls from them ever again until their permit's ready. So yeah, we're getting a good volume of that. So when you say research, you get a, um, you point them to the online portal. Can, uh, uh, let's say, a <coughs> potential purchaser of a piece of property, can they uh, check any records that are associated with that uh, piece of property through that um, through the system what they're doing what what happens is it it pulls the information that's that's currently in the system they can't uh -huh. currently look at the building permit records um, it'll give them a, a history of, of what's been done at the property now we've gone from two very old outdated systems and combined them into one so some of the information may not be in there um, so that's when you have to contact city staff to uh, get the full report. So it would list a history of, say, any uh, mechanical or building permits associated with it, but are you able to actually open that record to see what it is? It's just listing it's, what Yeah, it's just it's listing the, okay. the permit date, it's listing the description, the issue date, final date, status, okay. that kind of stuff. All right. Is there any system that will tell you for a specific site that you enter, like what all the applicable setbacks and height restrictions are? I'm gonna have Ethan answer that. Or 
Yeah. So that's the that's part of the goal of what Open Counter should be able to do once we get there. Um, and so that would be something that uh, we'll definitely kick out for comment if there are specific things that you'd like to see, because it may not be completely obvious to us what are, what the list of information that will be helpful to you would be. Um, that would be notable. Yeah. I just want to comment since your records are online at, at Central Sand, we've been using them, mm -hmm. and so our staff will go in just to see what permits have been pulled on a property, just mm -hmm. to see the status of a permit, mm -hmm. um, and it's been very helpful, and the information on there is very similar to like what the county offers. You don't actually get to see the permit, but it'll give us enough of a description, what inspections have been approved, what's pending, what's been denied. Um, so it's been, we don't have to call as much, we do still have to call, but it's been very helpful for us. We love hearing from you. <laughs> So I did put my email down. Feel free to email me. Um, also, um, if I'm not available, you can always email buildingtech at walnut-creek.org. It branches out to all of the permit technicians, and one of us will be able to assist you. Okay? Thank you. All right. And with that, I have the pleasure of introducing our engineering team. Uh, and they decided that this was not high-tech enough for them. So, which gives you a sense of where they're at in the city. So we're going to Apple TV in the back. Uh, so actually, is, if you want to rotate around a little bit, and we'll let you take it away. I think we'll need that mic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, go ahead and, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and introduce Marianne. Ma Marianne bon Bonifacio is uh, one of our um, engineers uh, that does a lot of digital plan check, and she's going to walk you through just real quickly what we do, what we, what we started to do in engineering regarding uh, uh, plan checking. Uh, we can do this on the iPad, but we, we, we also obviously do it on the desktop as well. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marian Bonifacio. Um, Right. So most of our efforts so far have been focused on trying different tools, um, such as iPads, having larger monitors, and Bluebeam for digital plan checking. Uh, most of our electronic plan check review um, are associated with our site development permits. Um, this is a sample from Bluebeam in which um, I've commented uh, some of the red lines to be easily visible on the screen. Uh, for example, I provide, uh, made a comment to provide flow line elevations and highlighted the locations. In this area, I've marked out the DMA boundary lines per the stormwater control plan and commented that the grading plan must show how the limit of DMA areas are established. And so you can kind of see how easy it is to navigate through the iPad, zooming in and zooming out on specific areas of the plan sheet. Um, so we found that electronic review is uh, easier for smaller projects, but can get more complex with the larger ones. Um, since electronic submittals are easier to send, uh, they are often submitted in piecemeals, uh, which makes it very difficult uh, to keep track of what is part of the submittal or final version or even part of a revision and sometimes even what's most current. Uh, so we would like that there is there would be a limit to the additional the, to to what submitted additionally um, before complete plan check review is done um, also it is important that when submitting electronically that the pdfs are printed to scale or kept at its standard sheet size and that um, drafting conventions are used so each sheet should have the typical north arrow and scale bar so that way we can electronically measure things on the plan set that aren't dimensioned or labeled on the plans. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Carlton to talk about plan grid. So once we're done with plan check, um, we're um, we're able to uh, turn around and, and take you to the field. So our engineering inspectors all have, this is, one of their, this is one of their iPads, so they have this software available to them in the field. Um, so I'm not using anything that, f to do this demonstration that's special. Um, and so uh, here's a set of plans. 
this is what plan grid <laughs> looks like. And we got into plan grid uh, by, at the behest of one of the uh, contractors working on one of the larger projects in town. And he said, hey, would you guys be interested in, in participating with this? They gave us uh, access to their project for about uh, a year. And then we decided that that was a pretty good uh, tool. The inspectors loved it. And we thought it was a pretty good deal. So we've started to move in the direction of loading up the engineering projects onto plan grid. And I've got licenses for, for our, uh, all of our inspectors to be able to do that. <coughs> One of the things that they really like about it is, is it's, it's, it's really fast to go through the plan sheets um, and that you can see this list of them. You can do some filtering. Uh, I can just go to the civil sheets and, uh, and, and just get those and I can go right to what I need to and I can zoom in, and it's just that fast. It's that fast in the field. It's that fast um, here in, the, in City Hall. And when we update these plans, th the inspectors know that they have the approved set because they're not updated on their iPads unless it's been approved. So that's one of the th models that we've, that we've gone with. When we first started doing this, we were doing it with the, in with the <coughs> developers, and there was always some confusion about what was up in plan grid based on what the developers were loading up and, and working out with their contractors. And if we were able to see it, it was confusing. So when we're inviting and using uh, the plan grid through our end, um, we found that it's um, clear what's been approved and what's not. The other thing that's, that's really good about plan grid and these projects is if there's any documents associated with it, um, like the, uh, I don't know if I can pull this PDF up or not. Um, that there's a, uh, I, I've downloaded this one. See, if it's not there, it'll, it'll try to download it. But you can put documents up there too. So we've been able to put the stormwater control plan. We've been able to put up the, um, the structural calculations. We've been able to put up central sands pieces and, 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 other, and other documents that are associated with it. Uh, you do an RFI and it's been approved. You do a material submittal and it's been approved, we can upload those and add that. So we're still just exploring that. See, if it hasn't been downloaded, it takes a little bit of time, but it, it's possible to, uh, to, to get there. So it's been a good tool for us, and we're moving in that direction. We'll wait to see. Uh, I think the other departments are waiting to see, especially building, uh, how well this has been working and how quick it is. They have a lot more permits than we do, so it's easier for us to, to test it. So there you go. There's the... And then this is one that we got scanned. It's got our approval stamp on it. Um, and we're, um, and not, one of the other things that happens is that this hyperlinking in some cases becomes automatic. And it jump you right to the sheet. So the inspectors love this stuff. And they, they, they love the ability to be able to just come in here and highlight on this sheet. And nobody can see that except for them unless they have rights to publish. So they can mark off stuff for themselves on their own version of plan grid and just keep track of it so they know what they've looked at, they know what they have issues with, they know what they've talked to the superintendent about. That can stay between the superintendent and the inspector until it actually gets done. That's an important thing for that relationship to happen. They do work out a lot of stuff in the field. Um, anybody got any questions about this? We, we really do like this, this technology. Yes, Courtney. So mine's a kind of a two-part question. One is, is Central San and Fire District using this? No. Or are you planning on going to ne it? Neither one are using it, um, not, not as of yet. Um, but I can tell you that we're starting a project with BART, and um, BART's going to use it, and, I, and the developer's going to use it as well. Because I think that it would be great with building that before we send an approval over before we issue the permit, you want to see the final per you want to see the final product. We can shoot that over to you, and you can get the final blessing, and shoot it back to us. And you're just uploading. So this does this interface with Bluebeam then? So Bluebeam, you're doing your comments on, but you're actually your inspector is going out with a proof set of plans with with the plan grid, correct? Yeah. So the workflow. So the the question is, you know, are, are, is stuff going straight from Bluebeam into um, into plan grid? Not necessarily. I mean, we, we're going to approve a set of plans that we've plan checked through Bluebeam, but we're going to get that final submittal from the, from the applicant with contractor developer team. And then once it's been approved, uh, we'll, we'll, go in, we'll probably go into Bluebeam and, and add, the, add the approval stamps to it. 
Um, we've learned that sc just scan uh, stamping them hard copy and scanning them up isn't, um, uh, it isn't as efficient with, uh, with plan grid. It's actually more efficient if you're just using the digital versions. We've had a couple of um, opportunities to test that so far. And so um, one of the things we just have been recently realizing is, is that it's a lot, the software is more efficient with the PDF uh, version of that. But then uh, we'll upload that uh, up to uh, plan grid separately. And then your inspectors, if they're doing any red lines on any of these plans, are they able then to incorporate that into the final project set? Yes. So they're able to incorporate the red lines if they publish, if they're published. So anytime you draw on it, uh, you can uh, tap on it after you after you're done drawing, and it will. Um, you can put. You can um, uh, choose to publish the uh, that markup up there, and then uh, when we go to archive the project, it'll take all of those published markups, uh, whatever they are, red lines, um, if they were highlights, uh, typed in comments, uh, those things will all come back with the uh, with the PDFs attached to the PDFs. So then you're eliminating your hard copies altogether? And this we, 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 th we see the potential for doing that. We're, we haven't done that yet. I mean, we're still exploring this and still seeing how it works. So we haven't officially made a 100% move in this direction, but we've been putting more and more projects in there, uh, and, it's, and it's been working. And the second part of my question was, later on down the road, uh, to late 2019, 20, 25, um, we're eventually going to go uh, digital uh, to have the public view records through OnBase. Right. Does this have an integration with that? So, no, it doesn't. No, there's no direct integration. We would have to then take that archive hard copy set and put it up into our, uh, in our, into our archiving system. And you would have access to it that way. It makes it easier for us because we don't have to then rescan a whole other set of plans, right? I can just take that PDF and upload it into the archiving system and be done with it. So we're, we're still working with those workflows. We haven't really gotten there with one of the projects that we're, that, that we're doing, um, but we're, that's where we're headed. So, quick, okay, last question. Yep. Yeah, quick question, Carlton. Uh, this access you get from the contractor or we have a online? So the I'm first initial t a foray into plan grid uh, was, uh, yeah, you know, they, they let us have a couple of their licenses to, to try it out, uh, one for the engineer and one for the inspector, um, but after, we got some initial feedback with that. We started buying our own licenses. So the licenses that we're using now are wholly the ones that the city has purchased. Yeah, so we can't give access to fire department or the sanitary at this point, right? No, I don't have, so I don't have access licenses if, if, to give if, out. Now, if we have a grid, our, our grid, city grid, so then we can upload the system and then we can give access to we, you can We can invite, and that's what we're doing. We're inviting uh, through email to, to the to anybody that wants to, that's part of the project team, to be able to access it so that they have access to it and, when we, and we get to control what level they get to comment on or what level of control they have. Um, so it, it's free to, I mean, it's, that access is, is dependent on whether you've bought the license for plan grid or not. So we're finding that some developers have, have and contractors have made the move because they're already doing it, they're already contractually, contractually obligated to do it. Um, and there are others that have said, eh, we're waiting and seeing. Uh, we're not ready to go there as a company yet. Or, uh, so we've had some contractors uh, that, that, that haven't moved there yet. But a lot of the bigger ones are, are doing it, and they're no problem. Uh, the, the folks doing the promenade uh, uh, project, they, they use it all over the place. When we told them we, had, we were going to put the plans on plan grid, they were great. Go for it. Do it. So, but the owner isn't, isn't seeing them on plan grid. Any other questions? That's it. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. And are there any other more general um, pieces from our guests thinking about technology? Are you guys using any kind of digital plan submissions or plan check or <coughs> some of these technologies on your own? Um, is this the direction you'd like to see us head? Any thoughts in that direction? All right. Well, then I will move along. So finally, we just wanted to take a, a, 
a moment at year's end to actually look at what we've done so far with the forum. So it's been a, a little over a year since we began the forum and we began it for a couple of reasons. We knew that we wanted to have more two-way dialogue and to move so that both sides of, could be more accessible to each other. You guys realized we were human. We got a chance to share donuts and coffee with you and, and chat about projects and, and learn what your concerns were. So there was that dialogue piece and then there, we also heard that it was important that we have a bit of an education piece where we could actually bring in some of these outside agencies or particular topics to make sure that we were being really proactive about sharing information and giving you also a chance to, to interface with each other. So um, some of you may recognize yourself in uh, these photos as they come up. But so far, here's a list of the outside visitors as well as some of the internal specific forums that we have hosted in the past. So we've been fortunate that we've had Central Sand who's continued to come by, East Bay Mud, Contra Costa Water, Contra Costa Fire, PG&E, Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> Uh, and we've also part done parking and transportation, as well as done some staff updates and internal journey maps just among the people in this room. Um, that actually checked off the list that we were given when we first had our kickoff meeting a year ago and said, what would you like to hear about? Hear about? Who would you like to hear from? This is the list that we received. So now it's time to revisit that list and see what it should look like moving forward. We also started, as you know, recording these forums um, and offering them up on YouTube. So for people, and that's both outside members of the development services community, but also staff members, anybody who might be missing these and wanna go revisit a topic later, this is something that we now have as an option. Simultaneously, and I won't dwell on this too much, but I think you all know that we've been working on the blueprint for success here in Walnut Creek. And, and the idea here is we had over 60 different initiatives in each of these individual areas that we had come up with a little over a year ago as ideas to make the process a little bit more seamless, a little bit easier for everybody involved, to communicate a little bit more clearly, um, and to knit it together end to end. And I wanted you to know that even though we're not necessarily keeping you updated on every small change, out of that master list, we've actually now, and this, this uh, is from our September council update, so it's already been a little while, we now have over 60% of them that we have made live and are either live or in progress with. It's something that we're really working hard on and we wanna know where we're doing it right, what else you wanna see, and if you have more questions about what we've been up to on that front, you can feel free to reach out to me and I can walk you through. Um, here's a little bit of a summary when it comes to Smaller projects, single family homes, we're starting to think about how do we better onboard them so that they uh, know how to actually interface with the city if they haven't done that in the past. Uh, one example where we see that a lot is down in Broadway Plaza. They're getting some people coming in in retail stores that have only been online businesses before. Um, so you can imagine if all you've done is sell online and then all of a sudden you're opening up a retail shop and this is your first time going through the process, how much you might have to learn in a very short period of time. So how do we work with them to, to help make that easier? We've been thinking a lot about things at the counter um, and actually I'm, I'm, it's really nice to have some staff members here who have been involved in that effort. We've cleaned up some of our rules and regulations. So we've actually been bringing pretty regularly and those of you who are on the commissions will have seen some of these come through just ways that we can uh, clean up our trees or parking or little things that end up uh, disproportionately hitting audiences within the city that, that we can clean up for them. For kind of our mid-level um, size projects, we're working on improving our 30-day completeness um, rates. So actually we've, uh, pretty substantially boosted the number of projects that are, are deemed complete for discretionary review within those first 30 days, um, when again, it's a size project where that makes sense. We're doing more online project tracking and scheduling with Acela, as we mentioned. We have commercial express review where you can actually schedule an appointment. And if your project qualifies, you can come in and get your um, uh, building permits within a day. Um, so you come in with, within, yeah, like two hours. It's even quicker than a day. And then for the, the larger scale projects, a couple of things that we've added, uh, project status meetings. So if you have a, a larger scale project, and I know Hamid has experienced this, um, then at that 30 day letter for your discretionary review, we actually get members of every team in the room to come talk through their comments with you. So it's no longer just a letter, it's actually a conversation where you can go back and forth and make sure that everything is clarified. 
Um, similarly, we're trying to make sure that there's a consistent project team that you can have meetings with at each stage. We have the forum, which all of you have been a part of. Um, and one thing we're looking at in next year it, that we heard from the commissions is actually increased access for commissions to trainings and updates and things like this uh, on their side. A couple of stats, more than 55 individual people um, have come to forum since it was started. And some of you get the all-star badge. Is there anyone here who has been to every single one? Uh, I feel like there's, we're, we're pretty close with some of the people in this room. I feel like I actually, we probably should have brought you like a trophy or a box of donuts or something, but, um, but thank you. Uh, we have 192 as of yesterday views of the videos coming out of these forums. Um, and we have five outside agencies who have actually come and visited the forum and, and been involved in some ways in this conversation. So we're starting to think about what the future looks like. This is going to be as much up to you as it is up to us. We're thinking about should this be something that's not just or that moves from monthly to quarterly and focuses more on bigger topics. You know, are, are we at this point, have we met monthly and now we want to move it to a different cadence? Do we want to have different type of content? Um, Heather was suggesting this morning, do we want to have like TED Talks? If the videos are so popular, should we be just doing five to 20 minute talks that are by you or by us about projects or updates? Um, do we want to do some of this digitally and, and talk more about digital services? And does this actually fulfill the need from our friends at Contra Costa Fire? Does this actually fill the need of dialogue? Or do you also want to see round tables or smaller um, individual conversations in addition? So Abraham Lincoln had a great quote that says, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So what I would say for you all is the best way to predict what the forum will look like is to tell us what you want and help us create it. And with that, I'll just take a minute and open the floor up to hear how's it been going? How are you feeling? And again, we'll, we'll um, send out a survey for some more written comments as well. Lennox Homes works in many cities, and you people are at the forefront, really. And you know, you're putting the attention to these items, and we're working through them, and it's just getting better and better. I just want to congratulate you because the other cities that we talked to said, "Look at Walnut Creek, and they're leading the effort." So, thank you. I want to second that. Uh, uh, we work in uh, 53 jurisdictions, and. Uh, I want to say the Walnut Creek is number one in terms of openness, in terms of uh, new technology, in terms of working with developers, in terms of looking at new ideas. So you've been great. And keep it up. And uh, uh, I want to say for uh, next year, uh, it's not a bad idea to keep the same, uh, same issues or same contents uh, because there are upgrades and there are changes mm -hmm. uh, that everyone can share and we can learn from it. So that would be a starting point. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Miguel. I'm a local civil engineer, but I'm also a board member at Central Contra Costa Sanitary District. And as I've heard the comments about the Walnut Creek's leading the pack, and I very much agree with that, has there been any thought given to trying to put together an effort to take these electronic tools and make them consistent across and amongst all the jurisdictions, including the county? It'd be nice to have one side fits all. So I'm really glad you asked that question. Something that we wanted to do first was just open the, the lines of communication, build some trust. But now that we've, we've gotten there, um, one thing that we are really seriously considering and have talked to a couple of, of the agencies about is having a little summit here that's just internal to agencies and the county um, to actually have some of these conversations about the directions that we're each heading because I think the, the two topics that come first to mind are these shared tools where ideally if you're building here, you wouldn't have to use different technologies or tools to go to each individual counter. Um, so it makes sense to start thinking about what our alignment might be on that. And the other thing that we've realized, and this might make you all laugh, but when we were putting together these, these journey maps, I would say that every single agency's message and every single 
uh, division of Walnut Creek's message was, if they could just do this a little earlier in the process, then they'd be set. And when you start to actually stack those on top of each other, you realize that like, you're, you really can't get out of bed in the morning without submitting new plans to everybody involved. And that's not feasible. Uh, so one thing that I think we can do better to serve you is actually do a little bit of that hashing out behind closed doors of, OK, who really needs what in what order if we were to put together what the ideal timeline looks like. And that's a hard conversation to have because everybody is coming from a legitimate point of view, but I think it's an important conversation to have because we should reflect reality. We should say, if you are an A-plus um, member of our development community, here is what it would look like in an ideal timeline, um, rather than just giving it to you in piecemeal. So those are the kinds of things that we're thinking about when we think from a, from a regional level. And I'm glad to hear it's something you're excited about as well. Let me be back. Okay, um, well, feel free to come up and chat with us individually. Thank you all so very much for joining us this year for the forum. Keep your eye on your email to learn more about updates and have a wonderful holiday season. <laughs>